It was a Sunday evening and we were watching something on telly and somebody just mentioned seat and swivel, which set me to thinking that we hadn't had a look on eBay lately to see if there were any uh, single passenger seats available. So he had a quick look and what do you know, there was one that was finishing an auction in two hours time. It hadn't got any bids and it was located only about an hour and a half away from us, which may sound like a lot, but it wasn't a large detour away from our route home from a trip to the North Wales coast that we were going to be making the following morning. So uh, we waited till the auction was a minute away from finishing. We bid for it and we were the only bidder, so we got it. Um, so that was exceptionally fortuitous because although it's not in great condition, we paid £40 for this passenger seat versus other second-hand ones which are being advertised at £600. They are almost as rare as hen's teeth, so um, it's rare even to see one at the ridiculously large price. So at that price, we, uh, we obviously were going to snap it up. We went and picked it up on our way back from our Welsh trip. And this video is going to show us um, fitting not just it, but also a swivel. Uh, by way of a slight spoiler, you can see that I'm sitting in that seat and it is swivelled. This is Erica's passenger seat, double passenger seat, and I'm just trying to detach it from the vehicle. When previously, when I was removing the winch, I took out the driver's seat. I had options as to which level I took it out at. There were three different layers to the, the driver's seat. This one, we actually want to get the whole thing with frame out. And in any case, because this seat has absolutely no adjustment on it, it is literally just a bench seat. Uh, th there would be no option. It has to come out via these bolts that go through the floor. So that's what I'm, uh, I'm just doing here. Uh, this one I've already loosened, they're, they're quite stiff to start with, as you'd hope, because um, you don't really want that seat coming loose. And having started this on the door side and it going a lot more easily than I might have expected, I'm now coming to think that the two bolts on the other side of the seat, um, they actually bolt in as if it was a single seat, it's only, it's, I'm not sure whether you can see there, it, the, the bolting points are the size of a single seat but the seat then overhangs to, to be a double. Um, I'm now thinking that those over there are going to be a little, little bit trickier purely from the point of view that I'm going to have to contort myself to get under there. That is Erica without a passenger seat. What it turned out is that the front two bolts are actually um, permanently bolted through the floor. The back two um, came up the, the thread and all, so we'll be threading back down through those holes. Obviously, now having access under that seat, it's actually filthy under there. Nick has just been to get a vacuum cleaner and a dustpan and brush to do something about that. And what we're now going to put in is a single seat that is not in fantastic condition, but it is a single seat. Um, it's obviously come out of the higher spec of vehicle, um, so it's the plush seat even though it's not in great condition. And the previous owner swapped the driver's seat pad and the passenger seat pad, so we've actually got some holes in the side of it. But we can cover it over, we can get a new seat pad for it if needs be. Um, in the meantime that will allow us to access the back of the vehicle without having to go outside and in due course we'll get a swivel for it. All four bolts are back through the floor, so theoretically all we need to do now is pop the new seat in and then try and get around the fact that the new seat has a lot more features than the old one and work out what we can do with this uh, seat belt connector uh, when we don't actually have the same connector on the new seat. I'm sitting in Erica's new passenger seat. It's a single seat, you can see there. You can now walk straight through to the back. And it's been something of a trial to fit this seat. Um, taking off the old one went really quite unexpectedly easily, um, even though it did involve rolling around under the vehicle for a little while to just check that we weren't going to lose a bolt through a hole. I will be very happy when I reach the point that I don't have to lie under this vehicle again. And putting the new one in went really easily. The problem is, this new seat came out of a higher spec of Peugeot Expert and it has a completely different set of wires on it. 
we had a single connector with two wires. Uh, we actually had to break it apart to, to get it out because you could, it's not a type of connector that you can just disconnect. Certainly not without a special tool. Um, so we broke that apart and we popped the new seat in and there wasn't an equivalent connector on the new seat. There was one that looked very similar and it had also been broken apart but it had a different set of wires coming out of it. So we did lots of thinking, lots of looking, um, inspected where the wires on the old seat went, went, looked where the wires on the new seat went and came to the conclusion the only purpose of those wires were it went to the seat belt reel of the third passenger seat. We've never used that seat. Um, so against better judgment, we turned on the ignition, um, didn't really want to do that until we'd got everything reconnected for fear of a, a permanent fault coming up that we'd have to get cleared by a garage. And we turned on the ignition and we got an airbag fault. So what to do? Um, did a little bit of Googling at that point and the only suggestion we could find that was a, a fail safe and it was what I'd already concluded we needed to do was take the third seatbelt reel out of the old seat, put it um, plugged into the new one and then just sit driving with a third seatbelt reel under the passenger seat. Uh, so that's what we've done. We had a little fight with the third passenger seatbelt reel. We managed to get it out. It is now plugged into that point. The fault is cleared. How ridiculous because you apparently can't reconfigure the um, the computer or at least other people haven't succeeded uh, to tell it that that seat no longer exists so we will forevermore be driving around with a spare seatbelt reel plugged in purely to stop a fault from reappearing. Hey ho, worse things happen as long as it passes an MOT. Uh, there's no safety issue, there are no airbags in the passenger side of this vehicle. Technically there is one now because there's one on the side of this passenger seat but it's not connected to anything. Uh, there, there were no airbags on the old seats so we've not put ourselves in any worse a situation. As I say we've, we've just had to reconnect something that we were never using anyway. The sun may not be ideal to show you this but this is the uh, offending connector and it goes to the seatbelt reel for the third passenger seat. Um, we're going to have to very securely fix that under there so that can't come undone. Um, probably not something we want to do other than by cable tie immediately because we will be getting a swivel to go under that seat. And this is the state of the old seat that we've had to uh, rather take apart in order to remove the seatbelt reel from there. So I think we can safely say we won't be selling that on. A few minutes later and it is even more stripped back, ready for the scrap man. It would have been easier to have fitted the swivel before fitting the seat, but I didn't want to order the swivel, which is a relatively expensive item, until we had the seat installed and knew it was all okay. We fitted the seat on a Sunday, I ordered the swivel the same evening, expecting it to arrive on the Thursday or Friday, but it arrived on the Tuesday. So sooner than expected, we were taking the seat back out, albeit not from its floor mountings this time. This is the passenger seat swivel base. So it's got a release lever there. Bearings are in here. Uh, it's a heavy item. It has got safety certificates. Um, it's more expensive than the one that hasn't got safety certificates. And what we have to do now is pop it onto the base. At this point I explained the fixing method as I understood it at the time. I've cut that footage because when I came to offer the swivel up to the seat I realised my understanding was flawed. This arrived without any instructions and we watched the video provided by the supplier on YouTube which is actually for a different vehicle and it all looks straightforward so based on that video we've taken the seat out um, between the base and the sliders. Left the sliders attached to the seat because in the video um, the, the swivel went at that level and that's exactly what they say on the description as well. However, when we inspect the base that we've been provided that just doesn't make sense. So we, uh, we've tried calling the supplier, they're doing their annual stock take this afternoon. So we're going with the fact that there is no other way that these uh, the fittings that we've been provided and where the counter sinks are in the base plate and the way that we know this goes up the only way it can possibly fit is 
above the sliders and we're slightly buoyed in this interpretation by this statement that's on there if it's on to original slides. So we're going to go ahead with it like that and, uh, and see what happens. So here I am removing the six Torx bolts that hold the sliders onto the seat so I can remount the sliders onto the base. There are six of these holding the, uh, the seat onto the rails and they looked rather rusted so I sprayed them with plus gas uh, when we fitted the seat. But even so, I do find it a little bit disconcerting how easily seats come apart. Back on here now. So we can now put that back on there because actually it never needed to come off. say though it's a lot easier getting at these without seat in the way. What I didn't know when I made that statement was that I was yet to have to access those nuts another three times, the final time with the seat back in place. It would have been much easier if we'd worked out at which level the seat went before we started and thus hadn't removed the rails to start with. This here is the seat belt that I referred to the other day that now needs to live under that seat because if we don't have it connected to this connector. It gives us an airbag fault for an airbag that doesn't exist uh, related to a seat that doesn't exist. Okay. Yeah, say hold on that. And now I'm just taking these sliders off again because it turns out there are two sets of holes in this seat base and this um, slide register tries to force the rails apart and what I've done is put that into the wrong set of holes. Back out with those slider rails followed belatedly by some careful measuring. So left to its own devices uh, the, these rails will spring apart and want to go into the outside holes. It turns out that actually, as you can see, there's two sets of holes each side. It needs to go in the outside hole on that side and the inside hole on this side. And that then places the rails the exact size apart as on the seat. And therefore we know that is how far apart they were when we took it off. So back on again. I now thought I was tightening those nuts up for the last time, but my optimism was misplaced. At this point I received a phone call from the supplier of the swivel base responding to my message asking for confirmation of the fitting position. The statement in their video, linked on their product page, that each swivel comes with a full set of instructions, turned out to be false as they have no instructions for this model. They do, however, have a diagram, and within a minute I had a copy in my email inbox. It told me everything I needed to know about the fitting, reassuring us that we were putting everything in the right places. We weren't quite over the hurdles as not all of the holes in the swivel were quite lining up with the rails, so with the swivel impeding access I now had to loosen some of those nuts off again to persuade the rails into the exact position they needed to be. At least I was very familiar with the position of those nuts by then. It was then finally time to get the seat back into position. The final stage is to uh, reattach the seat, this time to the swivel rather than to the rails using some bolts and some nylock nuts that have been provided. In fact, all of the fittings we're now using are those that have been provided. There's countersunk hex bolts that have gone through the original seat rails and um, new, new nuts and bolts 
going up through the plate and into the original seat holes. This is the last nut just going in. As with all of these things, this is not an entirely comfortable um, thing to do. I've been lying at all sorts of contorted angles. Even with the obstacles we met along the way, neither the fitting of the seat nor of the swivel took dreadfully long. And with the lessons we've now learnt, if we were to do the job again, I imagine we'd have it done in about a third of the time. I'll just finish this video by saying that we have now found out that you can buy a device that is basically a resistor with a couple of prongs that's designed to plug into the connectors on airbags and seat belts to fool the computer system into thinking that item is still there. Um, I've ordered one of those from China, probably um, going to take about six weeks to arrive, but it's only cost £1.99. And when it does arrive, we will either plug it in or we'll decide at that point that it really is no bother just driving around with a seatbelt under the seat. I hope this video has been useful to some people, although I appreciate that if you're not trying to fit a seat or a swivel into a Peugeot expert, then it's probably of limited interest. There have been other things going on in Erica this week. We now have a diesel heater and a battery in place. So next video we'll be focusing on the area under the sofa.